Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to cover chapter 11 from your textbook, which is all about groups, interests, and movements. So let's start with groups. When we think about group politics, group politics are the basis of that idea of pluralism. Interest groups constitute one of the major linkages between government and the governed. Now, groups can be sorted into three main types. You have your communal groups, your institutional groups, and your associational groups, which often take the uh, idea of those interest groups that we see in American politics. Communal groups are the groups that we belong to on the basis of our birth. You can't get recruited into these groups. I mean, outside of adoption and things like that, but your families, you're born into it. If you're in a tribe, you're born into it. If you have a certain ethnicity, you're born into it. There's nothing you can really do to change these features about your group identity. Institutional groups are a bit different. Institutional groups are those groups that are created by some sort of government order. And these groups are part of the machinery of government. They differ from interest groups in that they enjoy no measure of independence. So some examples of institutional groups are bureaucracies and the military. When we think of these groups, when we think of the military as an institution, the military has certain desires as a group that it relies on the government to handle. Some of these things could require, could, could be more funding, can be uh, more control over their own affairs as opposed to control in the hands of elected officials. We can think of these institutional groups as having an interest in something uh, that is mandated by their order. They differ from interest groups or associational groups that we'll talk about in a bit in that they enjoy no measure of independence. These groups are not really separated from government whatsoever. They are part of the government. However, they have their own specific interests that we can analyze. Now let's talk about those associational groups. Associational groups are voluntarily formed by the people who come together to pursue shared goals. Some examples of what are usually thought of as interest or pressure groups uh, could include things like the National Rifle Association or the American Medical Association. These are groups that people can join. Uh, in the United States, we have plenty of groups that people join, commit their time, their money, all in the hopes of securing some type of goal. Now, when groups get together, when groups have a goal, we can see some patterns. Political scientists have argued that a group's influence is dependent on its resources. So groups rely on public sympathy for their goals. You need to have favorable opinions amongst the general public. Otherwise, uh, they're not going to members of the legislature or executive branch are not going to have any sympathy for you. They, if they, the public doesn't like you, government is not going to act. The size of its membership, specifically large groups, are actually quite a force to reckon with. We can think of the AARP, which helps uh, provide uh, elderly individuals with access to lower uh, cost of medical care, lower uh, interest rates, and things like that. Uh, a group's influence can be greater if it has better financial and organizational strength. could also be worse if it has less financial and organizational strength. Uh, interest groups can also be defined by their ability to inconvenience or disrupt government. Think of protesters. Protesters who have an interest, they can use their interests, their passions, uh, to try to get their way. And sometimes this can pose some problems for what the government would like to do. Finally, interest groups links uh, may, may find they have links to political parties or government bodies. Uh, interest groups in the United States, at least, they uh, typically align with uh, one of the major parties, but there are interest groups that will try to seek out the support of Democratic and Republican politicians alike. Now let's talk about access. When we think about what these interest groups 
desire. They need to go and be able to coordinate efforts with people who have an instrumental role in the government. And so having access to many uh, members of the bureaucracy, the assembly or legislative branch, a specific congressperson, for example, uh, you would want to have access to the courts, meaning you would want to have attorneys who recognize how to uh, get your way in court. You would want to have access to the leadership of a specific political party. That way you can move the needle, so to speak, on what the party wants to accomplish. You would want to have access to high-profile media members. That way your story can be told in a positive light for you and a negative light for all opposition. Finally, interest groups want to seek the support of international organizations as well. These international organizations can apply pressure from above and try to put uh, other nations and their uh, government in line with them, with their own goals. Now, for this last part of the chapter, we're going to dive into two different videos that use the United States as an example of lobbying. The first is from Khan Academy. I'm going to post that in the discussion board below. And this is all about the budget. Uh, the, the budget of these interest groups, how much they spend, what their membership is like, uh, just to find out a little bit more on how these groups utilize their effort. Then we're going to look at a story from Vice News about one uh, interest group, how they gain access to key politicians in the form of lobbying. Now we can use the United States as an example to show that whenever there is government that uh, responds to organized efforts, interest groups will naturally form. And we see this at play all the time in the United States. Now, their success is not a given. It's not a guarantee. However, we can notice some patterns in government and politics and how interest groups can play a, a very leading role in these areas. So I'm going to post these two videos alongside this lecture video. And that's actually going to be it for... Uh, chapter 11. Uh, it's a shorter chapter. Uh, chapter 12 will also be a little bit short. That's why we are holding these things twice a week right now. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and also post your questions in the discussion board below. Take care.